after an entire summer of trade discussion, James Harden is officially a Los Angeles Clipper, and he made his debut last night in Madison Square Garden. So here's how it went down. I mean, I, I always end up walking up that tunnel, and MSG is always doing Yeah, he starts sweating. <laughs> James Harden, though, making his debut here in the world's most famous arena. Pulls up here, gets this one to go. He was four or five from the field in the first half. He scored nine points, added three assists and three rebounds. The Clippers led 46-42 at the half. Rich, going ahead to the third quarter here, the game tied at 73. James Harden pulls up. Whew, the Clippers are going to be a problem. I right, look. People can try and dissect them one game, five games, three games. At the end of the year, if they are healthy, they are going to be a problem because you have a mean distributor to high-level offensive players. It was all Knicks, though, Ooh. in the fourth quarter. Good I think to see R.J. Barrett back. The, yeah, the offensive struggles, people forget, they have, like, the second-best defense in the NBA. They were rolling here. Isaiah Hartenstein, oh, check that. Dante DiVincenzo gives it up, gets it back, goes up for three. It's nice. Look, but at the end of the day, I've never paid money to watch to watch great defense. I, I want to watch some guys put the ball in the bucket, and that's well, what they were doing late in this game. Dante DiVincenzo heard you. He got that one to go as well. Nicks up double digits in this one. Jalen Brunson finds Julius Randle, who's been struggling a little bit early on in this season, but that three-pointer is good. The Knicks get the win, 111-97. Let's take a listen to James Harden after the game. I feel kind of weird out there, but you know, just not really having a preseason game or – an opportunity to participate in the full training camp or none of that. It was just out there just basically winging it. But uh, I try to go off my basketball instincts and, you know, what I've been what I've been doing for the last, you know, few years or whatnot. First couple of minutes I was tired. <laughs> it was like, oh, fast, but uh, I mean, I got adjusted to it. Um, you know, it's going to take me a few games to, to kind of get used to the pace. But other than that, it was still basketball at the end of the day. Ty Lue also said that he wants to give this group about 10 games to see things working in that capacity. All right, Zach, you were actually in the building, though. What did you see in this one? It was a little clunky, and we should have all expected it to be a little clunky. You're taking <laughs> a giant piece who has the ball all the time and plopping him into a team eight, nine games into the season, six games into the season, whatever we are, and you got guys who need the ball all around him. So it was a little bit clunky. Everybody's got to find their place. 22 turnovers. Some of them were just sort of, we're getting to know each other, throwing the ball all over the gym. They've all got to figure out how to play together. It's a really interesting puzzle piece, and it's going to take a while. Should Russ start? Should Russ come off the bench? How do you distribute minutes? How much does James and Kawhi play together? These are all questions, but last night it was a little clunky with everyone trying to kind of find their place. You saw glimpses, glimpses of how they could all work together and make it into something bigger than the sum of their parts, but it's going to take a while to get the kind of synergy they'll need to really compete with Denver at the top of the West. Absolutely. Denver has set the standard. I know it's a good show when, when Zach uses words like plop and clunky in it. Our <laughs> senior NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, is joining us in studio. And Woj, Zach touched on it, but I keep coming back to this idea that it's pretty rare to have just six games in uh, a new piece plopped in like James Harden. We're not talking about the trade deadline. We're talking about six games into the season. So how is that adjustment reverberating around this organization? Well, and that's such a big part of why the Clippers wanted to get this trade done as soon as possible. Uh, to not have to, to do this five games into the season versus 55 right. at the trade deadline, uh, they have time. Time is on their side to figure this out. And, and listen, that's why th there, there are no illusions among the Clipper leadership, among their star players, and certainly uh, uh, within the coaching staff and Ty Lu, that this is going to take time for all the reasons Zach just detailed but getting this trade done early in the season was paramount for this Clipper team sure. especially when James Harden has shown you he can be a ceiling raiser uh, for a team's record in the regular season postseason there's still more certainly to see from him but you're also not asking him to carry the load in the playoffs with this team that maybe he had two with some others. Absolutely, and in Harden's debut, take a look at this. The Clippers, they played their slowest game of the year, just 93 possessions while also turning the ball over, as Zach mentioned, 22 times. That's their most in a game this season. So, Cheney, I mean, is time going to solve this, or is there a larger issue at play here? I'm going to dive into the nuance of time, and the time that we should be talking about is the time between the point guards, because Russell Westbrook and James Harden are two opposite, polar opposite style of point guards. Now, when Russ is on the floor and 
he has the ball. James will have to work on becoming a better catch and shooter. That's something that Philly asked him to do, and now he's going to have to bring that over, and I think that confidence will help him. Now, when James Harden has the ball, Russ, they're going to have to figure out how to make sure that the court is not shrunk, since we're saying clunk, clunky. Make sure that the court is not shrunk, and that is the challenge. So the, managing the time when both of them are on the floor, the time when they're on separately, and how to make sure their stars keep going, it is imperative. Well, look, at the end of the day, there's kind of this formula. Can he be the best player? And we're not talking about James Harden. We're talking about any superstar. Can he be the best player on the team? Mm -hmm. Does he need to be the second best player on the team? Does he need to be the third best player on the team? And I think what we've seen over the past few years is James Harden had a moment where we felt like he could be the best player. Then he goes to Brooklyn, and it's like he's probably the third best player on that team. And then he goes to Philly, and he's the second best player on that team. The point that I'm trying to make is he is fitting in right where he needs to be. When he is playing in the postseason, they're going to need him to distribute to those two horses, uh, Kawhi and Paul George, and then all of the other talent. So they don't need him to have a 30-point, a 25-point explosion. That would be nice, but ultimately, if he's distributing to those guys, that is where his value is probably the most. So I don't need a little bit of a postseason. What is he going to do? As long as he's distributing it and those dudes are carrying the weight, I think they'll be fine. Yeah. One more concern now for the Clippers. Maybe Jason Plumley, their backup center, you saw him helped off the court last night. Uh, team called it a left knee sprain last night. Now, he's undergoing imaging evaluation today, and there's certainly some concern uh, around that uh, for the Clippers. They don't have a clear picture of it yet, but uh, this is a player who, you know, playing 17 minutes a game, they don't have depth at that position on the roster. P.J. Tucker's played mm -hmm. some small ball center yeah. in his career, certainly. Uh, and this is not a Clipper team with the assets to just easily go out and plug in uh, a veteran in that spot. So that'll be one to watch here to see, you know, how Mason Plumley comes out of uh, this imaging, this evaluation here yet, uh, uh, through today and maybe even to tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely, because really Zubats and Mason Plumley, those yeah. are the two true centers on this roster. They need Mason Plumley for the push that they're trying to make. Yeah, I could, but yo, yo, get them donuts. Get out of them donuts. Get out of them. Get, get your, get, no, bro. get your ass out of them donuts. Bro, five seconds, man. Yes, I went bald when I was young. Stop tagging me in this video. I do not look like that. You guys want to get your face on NBA Today? Oh, look, yeah. stitch this and give us your hot take for the season. The hottest. We're going to put your face up on that big screen and answer your questions. It's the director of ambiance. It's the people's champ, and it's a new NBA season, which means it's time for, you know, my favorite segment. It's called TikTok and with Richard. Now, look, we sent out a prop on TikTok telling our beloved viewers, hey, look, you can answer some questions up on this big board. And what you guys do, you submit it. I made a promise to get you guys on this big screen, and we've been doing it all promise last season. Built. We're starting. And guess what? We have even more surprises that are coming for you because for the very first time, time ever we have an individual that is coming in studio oh. and she is coming right behind us Lachelle Smith Let's give it up for Lachelle she is our first hey. contestant here Thank you for on TikTok and with Richard God, you I know the fit too. Yeah, the I know fit right is, everybody's in some bit, yeah. Yeah. honestly yeah, honestly it. look we're gonna jump right into this you know make sure we have enough time for TV and look Lachelle we asked our viewers what is their hottest take okay. to start the season let's take a look hottest take my hot take is that Lucas winning MVP. Why he gonna win MVP? Because the man's gonna be a top three seed in the West this year. Lucas winning MVP. Hey. I mean, we asked for hot takes, Richard. You can't go with someone who's been like <laughs> top three in MVP. If you said, if you said, okay, Cam Thomas, he's going. Yeah, there MVP. we go. That, like, is that, that would be a sizzling take. I'm not mad at this, but it ain't a hot take. No, it's not a hot take. But look, they didn't make the postseason last year, so look, and he's off to a good start. So we'll give him a little bit of leeway on that. All right, what's our next one? The Houston Rockets are making the playoffs without the play-in tournament. Top six in the West. Why, why, why is he in a closet? Let's first establish that. And let me just say this. In a I, Miami respect, hat I respect too. the DV. Show, the DV. Show the chest off. What you got? Um, excuse me. I, I need a little bit of help here. Can I put this on really quick? Could you help me here, Michelle? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. I've just got like some clothing, oh, some accessories. Yep. Here we go. Yep, here we go. My finger's stuck, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Get through it. Hey, we got it in. Houston Rockets, we are making the playoffs. I'm speaking of this because I'm from Houston. And you think about it. Jalen Green has taken the next step. Alperin Shangun, say his name right. He almost had a triple-double the other day, Jabari Smith Jr. Great coaching. We're 500. They are on a win streak. They are on a win streak. And look, I was quick on the board, so... 
Here we go. Our last and the one that we've been waiting for. Lachelle, here's yours. Let's show them up. Who we got? LJ, I think the Memphis Grizzlies are going to be on the outside looking at come playoff time. OG. Their OG. best player is going to miss almost a third of the season. That's 27 and 8 off the board. I think they have a lot of issues, and I don't think they'll be able to overcome them. I think they're going to be on the outside looking in come playoff time. What do you think, Lachelle? I agree with OG. They are seeing the consequences of not having John ja Morant on that floor. It doesn't help that Adams is out, Clark is out, and it's so tough when your best player on that floor, Jaron Jackson Jr., is still struggling with foul trouble. So I agree with OG. Oh, I want to know when OG recorded this. Like that was. That no, was no I, I'm with it. Well done, do, do you have a hot? Did you have a hot take? Ooh. I do have a hot take. Oh, yes, here we give go. it to us. Give it to here we us. Go. It better be hot. I know the West is tough right now, but okay. my hot take is that the Lakers will be top five in the West by the end of the season. Top five? That's not that's that not hot. That, that is hot. Is, no, it is. That's Some people don't form. believe it. The Mavs are playing really well. Yeah, The yeah. Pelicans. Yeah. Suns could come back in there. Okay, no, Warriors. it's early. It's no, early. No, no, Maybe we're if a little. If you said top two, this is a team that went to the Western Conference um, Finals yeah. last year. That is still the bar they set. I believe it, but some people, you know, I look like there's a lot of people. and I Some people say, are doubters okay, right Okay, so on a scale of, like, Kind of hot to Chine's outfit, red hot chili peppers right now. How hot does that take? Well, this is what I'm saying. Given Ew. that they couldn't make an open three last night, I think it's pretty smoking. <laughs> <laughs>